Recently I made three recordings in which I demonstrated how we could perform integration by parts using a tabular mechanism. We identify the U and the V primed in the integrand and put them at the head of two columns. We then repeatedly differentiate the U and repeatedly integrate the V primed. While I was making those recordings it occurred to me that there is a kind of integrand which can also be integrated by parts but which for some reason we tend to neglect and not cover in our teaching of the subject. I'm referring to integrands in which there is a product of two polynomials. Like the following for instance. Maybe the reason that we tend to neglect this kind of integrand is that it is not essential to use integration by parts here. We could do it another way. We could expand the fourth power bracket, multiply through by x squared and get a sequence of powers of x up to x to the sixth. We would then integrate each one with the power law and end up with a polynomial of degree 7. The trouble with that technique is that the polynomial of degree 7 will look rather messy and if we want to refactorize it that will be quite an arduous task. Using integration by parts here has the advantage that it gives us the answer in already partially factorized form. So let's have a go at it that way. And I'm going to use the tabular scheme again. We have to choose u and v primed. We could choose them either way round because all we need is a u that differentiates down to nothing eventually. But can you see that as x squared is the smaller power, differentiating it away will be quicker if we choose that x squared as the u. It will only need three differentiations to bring it to zero. So let's start with our column on the left with x squared at the top and repeated differentiation. I've done that all in one go because it's pretty easy. Now one of the features of the tabular scheme is that eventually we must put alternating signs on the front of that column. I'm going to do that immediately because I have a nasty habit of sometimes forgetting it. Our next task is to identify the v primed, that's just the fourth power of 1 plus 2x, and repeatedly integrate it. Integrating that power of a linear function will have the usual effect of increasing the power by 1 each time. Let's put all of those expressions in place. That was easy enough, but it's not quite finished, of course. Each time we integrate, we have to divide by the new power. And also, because that's not just x in the bracket, but a linear function with a coefficient of 2 on the x, we have to divide by that 2 each time. At the first stage, that means we're dividing by both 5 and 2. So the coefficient in front should be a tenth. At the next step, we need to divide by a further 6 and 2. That's 12 altogether, so giving us 120th. And finally, a further division by 7 and 2, that's 14, which gives us 1 over 1680. I'm now ready to write down the answer to my integration by parts. The integral itself, x squared 1 plus 2x to the fourth, is the integral of the product of the two things on the top line. I developed the habit of connecting those with a horizontal red line. So that's the integral I'm going to work out and the answer is got by connecting diagonally. I use a blue line from top left to bottom right as far as we can go. The presence of the zero in the bottom of the left hand column tells us we can stop there. So now all I have to do to get the answer is to write out the product of the things at the end of each of the blue lines adding those up as I go. So for the first one that's x squared times a tenth and the fifth power of 1 plus 2x. The next term has x times 1 plus 2x to the 6 and the coefficient is minus 2 over 120 which simplifies to minus 1 over 60. And then finally 2 over 1680 simplifies to 1 over 840. That answer is now finished if we wish. Did you notice how we never actually had to expand the powers of 1 plus 2x very much? Can you also see that if we wanted to factorize this right hand side 
it already has at least a fifth power of 1 plus 2x in. Let's do that, taking that power out as a factor. At the same time, to avoid fractions in the bracket that I will then create, I'm going to take out the 1 over 840 to the front. So, beginning like this. The first term in the bracket will contain the x squared, and because the coefficient is a tenth, that means we will need 84 in front, because we've taken the 840th out to the very front. In the next term, it's a sixth power of 1 plus 2x, so we need one power. We also need the x, and because 60 into 840 goes 14, we will need a 14 on top. Finally, in the last term, the 1 over 840 is already out the front, so all we need is to make up the powers. A further 1 plus 2x, all squared. The simplification in the bracket is not hard. I'm going to do it in one step without talking further about it, and I'll leave you to check what I've done. And there's the final, and I think the neatest, version of the answer. So I hope here I have further convinced you of the power of the integration by parts technique to give decent, good-looking answers at the end, cutting out the work of factorization in this case. And also, I hope I've convinced you once again of the utility of the tabular method of doing integration by parts. I'll close there.